Are you a procrastinator? I'm going to give you 20 time management tips just for you today. So procrastination is one of the biggest um, traps that the adult can fall into. And inevitably, there are projects at home, tasks at work that we just don't want to do, right? How many of us? Hand raised here, I get it. They're boring, difficult, um, or seemingly unimportant. Um, even kids have modes of procrastination. After all, how many times did your mother have challenged you to clean your room? Um, we live in a world with quick and entertainment at our fingertips. So, you know, you switch on the television, turn on the radio, plug in the iPad. All these fun alternatives can be ultimately prevent us from completing tasks at hand, but of course, they get us nowhere fast. So, what's time management? All people are granted only 24 hours in a given day. How did we choose to use that time, okay, is what di is different between procrastinators and proficient time managers. Learning to manage time managing techniques will help you plan your day so you know exactly what can be accomplished. It's much easier to get motivated in the morning if you know what the day holds. Others just spend valuable time, okay, putting on... Uh, putting, you know, putting around in those pajamas, trying to decide what you feel like doing, and all of a sudden it's lunchtime and your morning was wasted. Um, denial will cause you to go anywhere, so rather it only makes your life more stressful. If you have to already made a deadline, right, um, you know, makes it more stressful, right? We deny that we need to do something that comes up on the deadline. Oh my gosh, we better do it. So rather than stress yourself out, let's discuss some ways to kick procrastination habit, become more productive with some time management tips. Who loves time management? I love time management. All right, if we remember real quick before, my name is Jim Black, and I'm your holistic empowerment coach to take people from that place of stuck. Um, to help them do that 180 shift with, with micro habits that lead, leads us to a life of authentic thriving with you know, the fit lifestyle. There's not a diet fad. It's not an empty promise program. It's about our micro habits that lead us to success, to be fit in our mind and our emotions. Because until we're fit there, we'll never be fit physically. And then we can talk about being fit physically with our nutrition and with our movement. And so I'm the founder of the 180 Fit Body Mind Method, which is simply which is simply eight micro habits that we must have in our lives to lead us to success. And one of those is our norms. One of those are things that we do daily. And these time management things are things that require action. They're, they're now. They're, they make us so that we will take action and not waste our time. So prisoners beware, okay? To succeed at managing your time and being more productive throughout the day. Are you ready? You must take action. If you haven't liked, subscribe, follow. In case I forgot to mention that. Um, it's simple, really. But find the desire to take action is usually where we procrastinate. Let's start with a few basic. Start making these changes and you'll see results so quick. One, start your day early. Do you roll out of bed each each morning, hit the snooze button five times, only discover that you're running into your, you know, your time is ruined and you're done with your weekends. Do you sleep in both days? Um, forcing yourself to get up on time without rushing and being stressful, uh, you know, is, is key. It's even on the weekends, you know, we want to make sure that on the weekends that we are actually really, truly engaging and utilizing our time well. So we don't want to be rushed. We want to focus. So get up, get dressed and get going. Two, prioritize tasks. It may be best to get in um, the habit of getting up early. You have more energy and be uh, be able to complete tasks early and feel more accomplished. Less stress when the big projects come about. You'll be finishing a lot of smaller jobs first because you'll be able to build momentum, okay? And and um, cross off more on your to-do list, which will help you feel more productive. So in the end, there's no right or wrong, but prioritize your task, whichever way you motivates you, if you do want to do the big ones first or the small ones. Once your spirit is lifted, you'll feel optimistic and more productive. Three, use calendars and daily planners. With a wide variety of calendars and planners on the market, there's no reason to be disorganized or miss deadlines. Not everyone will benefit the same time planner. So take your time, discover what works for, best for you, whether it's traditional or electric, PDA or web-based, or make all your deadlines and activities on it keep it one place your to-do list in one place and you'll discover gaps so you can take time to treat yourself calendars plans are only use useful though if you use them consistently bring your planner with you and mark down important appointments schedule your exercise classes exercise needs to be a non-negotiable needs to be on your planner you know um check your can before you book uh, anything with anybody after a few days you have a new habit and it'll be second nature four set and respect deadlines if you're one of the many people who stresses out when a deadline is coming build in some extra time you can finish a job well ahead of time 
at work, your boss holds you accountable if you miss a deadline. But what about those projects at home you put off until tomorrow? Enlist the help of a friend or spouse to hold you accountable for completing these dreadful projects. Um, it's difficult to admit the mistakes, so you'll end up working harder to avoid having to tell a partner or a friend you missed the deadline yet again. Five, focusing on one thing at a time. For years, experts have been chatting about the benefits of multi er, I mean, multitasking. I'm praising this people comments 10 different things at one time. What has been discovered recently, though, is multitasking is very often diminishes the quality of your work, even though it may be finished before the deadline. Um, so really key, take that into key here. You know, which sounds more productive, writing a five-page report uh, um, in one hour time or spending three hours writing the report while also answering emails, the phone calls. Um, just focus on the one thing and get it done, right? So we just want to make sure you focus on exactly that one thing and don't worry about anything else um and this is really big so many times i've you know i used to think that multitasking was really good and i'm someone who like has had to force myself to stop multitasking six limit your distractions are you addicted to computer solitaire have a habit of checking email messages every five minutes keep email and i am tuned turned off and you know keeping distractions to minimum while you working can help you focus and hold you to accountable to the task at hand. You'll be surprised how much more you accomplish when you're not distracted every five minutes. Some people will argue that music helps them think and concentrate. If that works for you, there's no reason to turn music off because you find yourself singing more than you're working. It's That's a pretty clear sign that music is affecting you. I'm someone who loves music in the background and I have different playlists for different things I'm working on. Seven, take frequent breaks um, from long and, you know, those tasks that just go on and on and on while this might sound kind of productive taking frequent short breaks can help break the monetary of a task and you can get some new energy i work i'm adhd so i work 20 minutes on 10 minutes off and the 10 minutes off can be something simple like i'm gonna go fold some laundry i'm going to go clean this i'm gonna go you know i'm gonna you know do a little exercise whatever it is i'm gonna do for those 10 minutes and then i'm gonna come back and focus other people who maybe don't have adh tendencies can do more of a 50 minutes 10 minutes off of 45 to 15 if your kids are adhd in the struggle this is good for them 2010 um as well so you know even stepping away from the project for five minutes will relieve your stress and you'll feel more refreshed and come back to finish the job do some simple stretching exercises at your desk go to the water fountain simply turn off your computer monitor close your eyes for a moment do some breathing exercise do that mindfulness stop uh, time wasting activities that zaps your energy so eight Set specific time to check emails and phone calls. I do this twice a day. Limit your distractions does not mean you can't communicate with the outside world. If you're expecting a client email, allow yourself to check and answer them maybe every 90 minutes or so. If you're dying to chat for two hours to your best friend in California, schedule that time in your planner once something is scheduled. Allow yourself that time for the activity. Setting these boundaries is especially important if you're a home-based business like I am. Your clients need to know that your, your business has and when they're allowed to call, not many business owners and their families appreciate client calls during dinner and family time. Nine, use a kitchen timer to set limits, or I have a, on my computer. Still so having a hard time convincing yourself to take a, tackle that big project, set a timer for 30 minutes and work intensely during that time as much as possible. Say, I only have 30 minutes. Something about working is a timer, but I like to have it there on my computer where the countdown clock is. Ooh, man. When the time goes off, allow yourself a uh, break. Move on to a small project. When the time chimes in, move into another project. These are perfect for people like constant change. You could do 30-minute increments. It's time blocking. Keep the timer um, with you. It takes away. The ticking sounds might be annoying, but it's a nudge, right? Avoid procrastination. Keep moving. Ten, outsource tasks often. If your budget out allows outsource or hire an expert to do the task you're dreading. So this may not seem... This is not the same as living in denial because you're taking the steps to hire an expert. Experts often have the right tools and equipment to make the job go faster if they also um, need to move quickly because they have to get to the next customer, right? And they want to do a good job. Um, so keep that in mind. And it's fine. Don't don't stress about, you know, if you outsource it. Um, Dean R00 talks about having a not-to-do list and ratify I radically changed my life. When you need to think about the buckets in your life and what those three or four buckets are that you really want to do. Is it family? Is it job? Is it faith? Is it what are the things that are really important to you in health, nutrition? And I have four of them, and those are things. And if it doesn't fit into one of those buckets, it's on my not to do list. I'm either going to outsource it or I am going to just say no because it doesn't need to be in there if it doesn't need to be done. Things that you're not good at, you don't have to try to be good at. There's other people who are really good at them. Outsource them. I'm not the best at marketing. So one day when I have make enough money with my business, I'm going to outsource that. I, I plan to get as efficient as I can for now, but eventually I'm outsourcing that because I don't enjoy it. I don't want anything to do with it. Like, it's okay. Like, that's someone else is really good at that. So 
you know, I'm not going to work on becoming a master at it. There's no point. There's other things I'm really good at. Um, so keep that in mind. You know, and another thing is, you know, hate raking leaves. Hire a landscaper. Hate cleaning your house. Hire a house cleaning service. Hate shoveling the driveway in winter. Hire teenagers down the street looking for extra money. Number 11, set reasonable goals. Which is more likely to get you motivated? Cleaning out the basement or cleaning out the corner of the basement? If you haven't gone into your basement in 20 years, what makes you think you're going to clean it all in a single day? Strive to break down seemingly unconquered tasks into small ones, more manageable chunks. So, for example, when it comes to a messy room, choose one small corner and clear out what's in that corner. If you move quickly, you might have the energy to conquer another small section. If not, cross it off your task and be proud of yourself. 12. Utilize commuting time wisely. While it may be tempting to catch up on some extra sleep on the train or bus, use this time to catch on email, finish project, projects, report to that day. Time you get to the office, inbox will be organized and clear for another day. Another thing is great, if you have one of the email things where they'll read the emails to you while you're driving, you can like tell them what to do. Like I love that. You can also have time to read your favorite book, magazine, listen to, improve your skills, like, listen to podcasts, you know, listen to YouTube videos, like, and use it to increase your skills. Life then not be all work and no fun, though. So if you use good time management skills, you use that time to enjoy some other stuff. Thirteen, automate electro electronic equipment to save your time. So your time is valuable no matter what job you have. There, it's easy to automate a particular task. So it, there's no shame in using technology to free time. There's plenty of ways to automate repetitive tasks. Ask colleagues and fan friends for some ideas as to what maybe they do. But, um... You know, some things, some writers dictate articles into small digital recorder while on the treadmill, then the voice recognition software trans translates into articles. I I use um, transcribing all the time, so pretty neat. Another example is if you spend time on emails over and over again, create templates. I have templates on my computer. That way, there's heavy lifting for me if I know when I get a new client. But certain things, I can do the same. Um, Organize your desk and computer files. A clean desk with the properly labeled files will save countless of hours. Trust me, organization is key when searching for answers. Instead of checking multiple folders that have one piece of paper, check you just check one folder because it's properly labeled and you know exactly in the directory to search for the computer with the client's missing file. I'll do some organizational file things here on this channel too. Don't know where to begin? Refer back to tips 10 and 11. Either hire a professional or just tackle one door at a time. 15. Reward yourself for a job well done. There are always ways to earn projects and tasks that we despise doing, no matter how much positive our mindset is. When faced with this scenario, schedule something fun right after you complete those negative tasks. You tend to work faster and look forward to something uh, to choose. So go on a family hike. After a morning of yard work, allow yourself a phone call with a friend. Clean a bathroom. You know, after cleaning a bathroom, grab a cup of coffee after finalizing client report. 16. Be decisive. Rather than debating for 15 minutes over if whether you should keep your 20-year-old college textbooks, set a timer on a stopwatch and make the decision in less than one minute, okay? So I do this, like, because I can be really indecisive, believe it or not. Um, the longer you think about your options, the more options you allow yourself to have. <laughs> the less likely you're going to make a decision. You can make a game out of it by letting your kids time you, take turns with a stopwatch, and have a friendly competition. You can come, you can fill up the donation box with the fastest, right? Um, 17, don't micromanage. I know. If a college or family member is wearing a product, avoid asking 500 times if they need help or if they want to know other ways to do things. If you're focused on other people's work, your, your work suffers. Lead by example. Focusing on your own project. Work efficiently. You also give others space to accomplish things that might surprise you. I know it's hard. Um, 18. Learn to say no. Okay, this is the not to do list. It isn't about being rude to clients or friends. Rather, it's about taking control of your free time. When asked to do it, take on a responsibility, consult your calendar to decide if you can do it. Most people would prefer an honest no rather than an overburdening someone to do uh, and have them do less than desirable job. So if you feel like we're saying no, suggest a better time, try a replacement, but get used to saying no. Take advantage of energy bursts. We all have them, right? Don't we all have energy bursts? There's no right or wrong way to start time, right time to start a project unless you're trouble, you'll be in trouble for, you know, breaking your neighborhood's noise ordinance, right? But if you feel like mopping your floors at 10 p.m. when your family's asleep, go for it. Battle insomnia, organize your kitchen pantry. What, what's stopping you? Even if the energy is short-lived, you'll feel much better accomplishing a task. 20, be affirmative. Negative thoughts permeate our minds very easily. When we get discouraged with a challenge, we carry these negative thoughts with us. We start to believe that challenges are impossible and it's okay to give up. And we leave things unfinished. The same can be said of positive thinking. Instead of saying to yourself, I'll try to get this done, say in a, in a positive way, I will get this done. I got this. So, final part. Everyone has the ability to change what we don't like. If you're a procrastinator, you have the ability to change your ways, but you can only but only you can change, take these action steps to become more productive. By practicing just one of these tips every week or every day, 
if you're ambitious. Um, you soon develop a lifelong habits and managing techniques and become your second nature. Engage your family to join this challenge with you. What a life lesson this would be for you and your children, spouses, whatever. You're teaching them to value your time. So what are your, what are your time management techniques? Post them in the comments below. Which one of these are you going to do today? Procrastinators, I need you to post. Which one are you going to do today? Because if you don't, you're not going to do it. And we know if we make things vocal, we'll actually do it. So make sure you post. Let me know what you're going to do. Let me cheer you on. Let me hear that you've done it. Come back and let me know what worked for you, what didn't work for you. I'd love to know your thoughts. What questions do you have about living a fit life? Um, about habits, about our mindset, about our emotions, about nutrition, about working out. How can I help you live a fit as a lifestyle and not just as a skin compartment or a fad or um, an empty promise program? Not about those things. If you're not downloading my app, please make sure you do. Go Gen 180 Fit. There's lots of stuff. Um, lets you know exactly when I do live workouts and when I have courses and how you can if you do one-on-one -on -one coaching with me or be part of my group coaching, reach out to me anytime. I'm here for you. I believe in you. You're worth it. Be brave. Be kind. Live authentically. I'm a shy tribe. And remember what? You're just one habit away. Maybe that habit is one of these tips.